What happens when you don't pray? You are often told to pray as a child of God or as a believer, as, as a Christian. You hear in sermons and you hear in Bible devotionals that you should pray. Even your pastor tells you, pray. In 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17, the Bible puts it clearly and simply in these three words. It says, pray without ceasing. Now, what happens should you stop praying or not pray? I want to give you these few pointers that I want to tell you what would happen to you if you don't pray. So, if we look at these points, it will give you an indication. Maybe you've gone through these things. Maybe you've experienced them. Well, I know for myself, I've experienced some of these, if not all, whenever I stopped to pray. Now, point number one is our trust is misplaced. So when you don't pray, you get to trust yourself, trust your ways, and instead of trusting in God, that's number one. Number two is that we act rashly. We do things quickly. We go for it. Should somebody come with a raw deal that, hey, take this one. This is the best offer. If you had not prayed on that day, uh, you will see. You will make a quick decision and realize later that, ah, oh no, this was a bad deal. Point number three. We can miss God's will for our lives. This ties on to, you know, the previous two points. So you get to miss God's will for the day. When you get to wake up and pray in the morning, you become in line with the will of God for the day, you know. So hence, you should get up in the morning, pray, find out what is the will of God. If you had prayed throughout, I mean, in, 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 in the morning, therefore, as you go about the prayers that you prayed in the morning, some way kind of like steer you, they direct you in decisions you should make and the ways that you should go. Point number four, we encounter troubles and hardships that could often be avoided. So, you know, all these points that I've just read tie around making the right decisions. And the key that you should be seeing here is that Praying helps you make the right choices. You make the right choices in life. Now, it makes me wonder as a point of interest that when Adam and Eve fell, did they pray that morning? Did they really consult with God? Or, you know, or the whole temptation happened before God came. Had God come, you know, um, to visit them with you know, would they have made that decision? Would have Eve really listened to the serpent? Huh. That's, a, that's a question to really ponder on. Because from these points that I've just raised, it gives us a notion that prayer or praying helps us to make the right decision. Maybe Eve should have said, okay, hold on serpent. I really need to check with God what he thinks about me having to bite that you know fruit of the tree of fruit of <laughs> the tree of oh man what god thinks of having to bite the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil yes i got it right now if if would have said that maybe we would have been reading a different story you know we wouldn't be here we would have read you know a good story would have continued on and on on this tale about adam and eve okay anyway let's continue now now point number this should be point number five if we stop to pray this is what happens we lack direction to act or seize opportunities aha there you go so now that you're not praying enough you're not praying much you stop or i mean to say you you lack there is no steering wheel you know that is steering you towards the right direction so you it's like you lack sense you can't decide on the spot that go for this you lack direction you can't recognize a good deal in front of you Next point, we become weighed down with fear 
anxiety and distress. You know, uh, the Bible says, is anyone not feeling good? Is anyone down? Is anyone depressed? Is anyone sad? They should pray. Is anyone happy? They should praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you don't pray, you know, depression easily sets in. Anxiety, worry, stress. It comes in now because remember, there, there is no steering wheel. There is no driving force, um, you know, that is helping you throughout the day. It's, it's taken away simply because you didn't pray. Last point, we lose our peace and joy. The Bible says in the book of Philippians, you know, that do not worry about anything, but rather pray about everything. Now you see where this is coming from. And then it goes on to say that the peace that surpasses understanding will fill your hearts, rule your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So w when you don't pray, you know, you, you, you miss out on getting the deposit of peace being given to your heart, to your soul, to your mind. I hope this has helped you. And also it will encourage you to pray. And I mean, give it a shot. Start with five minutes, 10 minutes. Even if you are a person who likes to spend more time in prayer, but, or, you know, and then it happens that you miss praying, uh, just get up, make some declarations unto God. Five minutes, dedicate the day to the Lord, you know. So you having to pray all the other days helps you for the times ahead, should you, you know, oversleep or feel tired or can't wake up to pray now because you had been praying all these days waking up you know something is deposited there in those days so that oh you know what it's it's kind of like understandable um the, the the presence of god the saturation of his presence you know the will the direction the steering force is there it's it's, it's not kind of like depleted because you 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 have been disciplined all the ways. So I urge you, be disciplined. Set time in the morning to get up and to, you know, to devote yourself to prayer and to talk to God, you know, one-on-one -on -one with God. Please let me know in the comments if this has blessed you. Subscribe or follow for more content like this one. God bless you.